garage the HP garage it's that's right yeah really an honor to be here um, who are you so I'm Robin Perovet I'm the general manager for information management I work in the HP software group yeah yeah and why are we in the garage well you know this is the birthplace of Silicon Valley where you know innovation sprang forward 40 years ago and that's what our group's all about so hopefully we'll talk about how we're applying that to this information explosion happening in the world today now we're yeah. here to talk about information overload and yeah. information explosion right what is it first of all what is information overload and information explosion why are you guys studying that and what what are you trying to well, we're, we're looking at it and we're pursuing a, you know, business opportunities around it because it's an unbounded problem. Right? We talk about digital information now in the order of exabytes per year being created, hundreds of millions of emails you know, every month being created, billions of, of instant messages, and that's not counting Twitters and YouTube and all this new stuff coming. So there's so much digital content being generated, both in the consumer and the enterprise world, yeah. that people are struggling to get value out of it. Right, and so that's the big problem we're trying to focus on. So is your group studying uh, how enterprises work or consumers or both? We're focused primarily on the enterprise. Okay. You know, I think, but the, the interesting thing is that in the consumer world, it's actually moving faster. Yeah. And you think of what your daily experience, how rich an experience you have in the consumer world, we think that all that stuff is going to come into the enterprise world very, very quickly. So you'll have you know, YouTube-like services in the enterprise, and nobody is prepared for that, right? So. As that crosses over, as a younger generation comes into the corp those corporations that demand those kinds of things, yeah, whole way, new wave of problems that you know corporate IT is going to have to figure out. So you're probably seeing that the amount of storage a company needs is going to, right. what, quadruple or go up by a factor of ten? You know, it depends on the industry, but you know, every year most companies depend if they're an aggressive growth industry, you know, financial services, telecom. We're talking about you know two to three x of digital storage growing every year. Wow. And the form of what that storage is is changing. So it's not just text or documents, it's video, it's images, it's audio bytes, all those kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about what you guys are seeing inside the enterprise. Because I know when I, when I was just up at Microsoft, when a phone call comes in, it doesn't leave the, phone, the voicemail on the phone anymore. Right. It puts it into the computer system. That's right? right. And that's stored on a hard drive somewhere. So it's kind of good news, bad news, right? The good yeah. news is everything is going digital. You can capture an image, audio, you can attach that to your email. The bad news is it's digital. And I say bad news because there's all these new laws, particularly here in the U.S., that require you to produce that information in court. Because the people say interesting things on email now. Yeah. They say interesting things on blogs and audio casts. So everybody's trying to you know, request information in a litigation activity, proving you said something incorrect. Right? So that's the big problem. Now you have all this digital content. How do you find this stuff and produce the court for to provide a defense? Well, court used to be that you had to bring paper in, right? right. During uh, even Microsoft's... Um, um, Oh, uh, monopoly. Uh, yeah, uh, antitrust. Antitrust. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lawsuit. They had to bring in rafts of paper, right? You bet. Now, do you bring just a hard drive to the judge? <laughs> Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. So, so the the process you're talking about is discovery, legal discovery, right? Yeah. And so the buzzword in my industry is called e-discovery or electronic discovery. And in fact, you know, a lot of the industry was created because of that Microsoft antitrust trial, because all of a sudden lawyers were mining through you know, backup tapes and PCs and all these things and trying to figure out what was relevant and what was not relevant. Yeah. So the whole industry now is created in, in my space on organizing all the information, making sure you don't change it, right? Because if you tamper with it, it's no longer appropriate evidence. And kind of combing How through. How does the court know that you haven't changed it? Because it, yeah. we know digital information is numbers, yeah. right? So, so changing numbers is pretty easy. So that's sec the secret sauce, right? So products like we, we focus on, we, we bring the information that, that might be relevant someday to fund those investigations into a secured kind of appliance that kind of locks it all down and makes sure that you can't change it. Interesting. And at the same time, we're indexing all of it so that when you need to find it, when your lawyers call one day and they say you have 30 days to find all the information about what you said about a stock trade 10 years ago or five years ago, it's very easy to find and produce. 
So uh, HP sells a box that sits in the data center that, that goes and, and uh, basically indexes all this data that is flowing through the uh, IT infrastructure? That's right. And you know, the secret sauce in all this is software, so I'm the software group. Um, and what that software does is it, it mines you know, emails, uh, SharePoint sites, uh, all sorts of portals and file systems, and brings it together in that controlled environment. Now, what we do is, because this is a huge problem, you know, a company will have now hundreds of terabytes in this archive. So you know, we think the best way to deliver that is a, is a kind of hardware software package so the customer has it, doesn't have to cobble it all together and maintain it. Yeah. A lot easier for them to deal with that way. Now, are you also looking at, uh, you're looking at SharePoint, yep. PowerPoint documents and Word right. documents and emails and stuff like that. That's right. fairly straightforward to index. Right. Are you do, doing things like security video? Because obviously yeah. uh, some of that comes into play to prove people were walking in and out of rooms and stuff like that. At, at that's right. Times. So that's the next way. But you know, in the federal government, they're asking for that. You know, um, you know, all the industry, all the organizations, the federal government, I can't name yep. <laughs> on this uh, on this video cast. But uh, definitely they all have three letters, right? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> all the big three letter ones. But definitely video surveillance is going to be the next big thing. Uh, I think for corporations, it's going to be a little bit more moderated. What people are worried about is all of the uh, video casts they're doing to announce earning results, for example, or customer information that's going out there. Because again, people could be saying the wrong thing, or people could request, hey, we heard somebody say that, and ask for it as evidence now. So that's definitely the next way. Yeah. When I worked at Microsoft, they asked me not to keep email for longer than six months. Is right. that true of these kinds of appliances as well, that they that's right. that they can be set up to store email for a certain uh, period of time and that's then right. trash it? Or? So if you talk to any general, so when we sell our products, we sell them both to the CIO and the general counsel. Yeah. And if you go talk to the general counsel, they'll say, my biggest problem is not what you have, but the fact that you haven't got rid of it. So yeah, there's a lot of formal kind of think policies rolling out to say, okay, now it's in that lockdown environment, make sure all of it's gone after a certain point of time, as long as you don't have to store it for some sort of compliance regulation like a SOX or something like that. But getting rid of stuff as fast as you can is a lawyer's dream <laughs> because what's not there can't be produced as evidence, right? Now, yeah. th that sounds weird to me and you because right. for most companies, wouldn't they want to keep everything? Right. You know, and, and for the court, wouldn't it be, you know, <laughs> wouldn't it be like, if I was a judge, I'd be like, where did that all go? That's right. you know? So yeah. So, <laughs> and so why did you get rid of your email after six months? So this is to me the most fascinating thing. Now you have the lawyers kind of expressing a voice on what you should or should not store. Yeah. And the lawyers are all about risk management, right? That, yeah. So the less information there, as long as you formally have a policy to get rid of it, they can defend that in court. Now, you and I, now I don't know about you and email, but I have all of my email from the last five years, including my previous company that was acquired by HP. Yeah. It's all there on DVDs if I ever need to find something, because you know, email is my most important you know, workplace application. Right? Exactly. So I don't want to leave that. <laughs> I don't want to depart with that. So this amazing tension going on in risk versus value, you know, as, as people demand a more information-centric behavior, and the lawyers are trying to prevent you from doing that too much. Yeah. So I, it's unclear how that's going to play out, but there's a lot of tension out there right now. But the, your services let yeah. you decide as a corporation that's how right. much is going to be stored around. Right. So when you bring a solution to a customer and say, OK, we try to help them classify. Here's what's going to be potentially most relevant to court. Uh, here's what is you know, less relevant and can be purged and then got rid of as quickly as possible. And here's stuff that really is important company reference information. So you probably want to keep that around you know, five, seven years just to support any compliance reasons or because it might be important information for the company. Yeah. So kind of classification of information is, is kind of one of the new hot button item, hot button topics in my industry as well right now. Now how does HP's offering compare to the, the, to the competition out there? Because I, I know yeah. there's other companies doing exactly the same thing. Sure, yeah. Trying to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, services companies trying to do this. There's a lot of storage companies have got into this business for, for obvious reasons. So what we think we're the best is two, three things. One is doing it on massive scale. You know, our customers are literally storing hundreds of millions of emails, hundreds of millions of documents. Give me a s sense of the size of the company you help out here. Is yeah, like, like you know, Fortune 50. 100,000 employees? Yeah, Fortune 50 company or oil and gas, for example, you know, that have 100, 300,000 employees. And those kind of companies generate a billion new emails every year. Wow. So you can imagine the scope of the problem and all the attachments that go into it. And that's just the email, right? We're not talking now about the SharePoints, which are growing like a virus in all these, these companies' sites. Um, so, so we're very good on the scale side, and then the second thing we're very good is we integrate everything into this one solution. So we bring it in, you know, we index it, we secure it so it can't be tampered with, and then you can make it findable very, very easily. 
And we do that without having to stitch together seven different products, right? So that's for, really for our people who sauce. might not be aware of how easily it is to search the email that yeah. has been stored. Yeah. Let's say I want to see communications from X employee to Y employee about um, a new job or something like that. I yeah. can just type in new job with employee name, employee name, and I can find it right away? You, I'll give you a topical example. I can't name the company, but okay. you know, oil and gas industry right now under a lot of scrutiny on pricing, especially yeah. retail pricing at the pump. So all of those gas companies are constantly you know, supervising their information and saying, well, did somebody say something about price manipulation or some sort of unfair pricing practice? And those lawyers will search our system, and these are now hundreds of millions of emails, and find the information literally in under a second. Yeah. Now that's, and then that's the initial set. And then they use recursive analysis, you know, using fuzzy search techniques and all those kinds of things, to hone in the stuff that's most relevant. Yeah. And then they do something interesting called quarantine. They'll say, okay, now that stuff might be related to this investigation ongoing. So we put it on quarantine, which means that until that investigation is done, nobody can touch it. It, it overrides all those other purge rules that the lawyers asked for before. Yeah. So you kind of have to you know, purge, you know, purge the stuff that's irrelevant, but when you find something that is, you have to quarantine it and put it on hold until officially you can let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Now what about companies who are moving from a centralized data center to storing stuff on maybe Amazon, right. S3 or, or Rackspace, or you know, storing stuff outside of their uh, enterprise on one of these cloud-based systems that certainly are getting more and more popular. Microsoft's yeah. building a, a ton of data centers to do all sorts of wacky services, and Yahoo's trying to get yeah. in this game, IBM's yeah. trying to get in this Cisco game. Even. Cisco bought an email, uh, a web email company yeah. just last week. That's just email, I'm thinking about yeah. file. Uh, the New York yeah. Times put all their archives up on S3, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah. So, so, you know, again, I think it's good news, bad news. The good news is that there's the technology is made very, very easy now compared to 10 years ago when this initial dream of utility computing was around to keep and maintain your information off-site very, very efficiently, okay? Yeah. But what I've seen so far is that, com you know, some of the companies you mentioned out there haven't done a good job on the compliance capabilities yet. So I think what you see them do is partner with either technology companies like ourselves or partner with specialists that know how to go in and mine that information when there is an issue that, uh, that's some sort of legal or compliance issue yeah. and offer it as an added value service, right? But I think that's why you're seeing more and more small and medium companies put things like their email and their files offline. The bigger companies haven't done it yet, mainly because if you sit down and talk to the CIO of a Morgan Stanley or a Deutsche yeah. Bank, they'll say, look, until I'm 100% sure of the security of that email, or my files off-site, there's no way I'm handing it off-site. But yeah. if you can, then there's, yeah, there's a great 10x uh, price value. M Microsoft right? is certainly coming after, maybe not that size customer, but certainly the next tier down with, right. with their services that store email in the Microsoft Cloud. Yeah, so. small, medium-sized businesses where I think most of that will happen for you know, the next two, three years. At some point, those, you know, Microsoft, Google, they're all gonna figure out the security and the compliance issues. So hopefully we'll be in a position to you know, provide our technology to all of those providers to, to create the service. Yeah. What are you learning from, so you, you, you attacked first the ability to search and, and store and search for lawsuit capability. Are you right. using that technology in other places? Because obviously uh, yeah. I bet you have a really great search engine and I know like yeah. Factiva has been going after the enterprise search and right. lots of companies have been doing that, right? You uh, bet, yeah. And I, and and nobody's really nailed it because it's hard. Yeah. It, it's Google has a lot of metadata to study on the public web, but inside your company, you don't have a lot of linking and That's you don't right. have a lot of uh, metadata about documents. So it's, uh, you know, building a really killer search for enterprises is you bet. the holy grail that still is out there. Right? And I think it's, it's more than just um, just search. Is, is the There's a whole new class of applications that I believe are going to be built on search technologies. Because right, it's not a matter of just finding the stuff, but how do you build that into uh, productivity applications that make you and I better at <laughs> what yeah. we do, right? So, so you're right. You know, we've applied most of the stuff we talked about today is on the risk management side. You know, how do you help the company protect themselves? Well, once you start indexing and classifying this stuff, wouldn't it be great if you know, the stuff that you got, got and I get overwhelmed with every day, somehow this, this technology make us smarter? Yeah. And so we're actually working very closely with HP Labs on semantic web technologies. I don't know if you've heard of semantic web or you yep. write about it. Oh, yeah. But we think this is going to be one of the enabling we technologies. We interviewed Tim Berners-Lee. So. <laughs> oh, okay. So there you go. Yeah. So, so you know, cool thing, what I found out when I joined the company two years ago um, is that you know, a lot of the founders of AltaVista are still here. So yeah. we actually have you know, hundreds of people in HP Labs that are specialists in the most advanced search technologies. 
And there's a ton of interesting work going around uh, semantic web as applied to classification of information and making it highly relevant to you and I. So that's the next way. We think that now that we're kind of tapping into all these unstructured information pools, both inside and outside the internet, if we can help companies create the next generation of applications that somehow take that and make the business more competitive, or users kind of sift through all that stuff and make their lives easier, more productive, sort of not constantly reading emails and checking blogs. You know, yeah. There's only so much time in a day I have to read all the ones that are interesting. I, I'm trying to keep yeah. up. I can't even keep up anymore. Yeah. So it's almost like you know, I need somebody to, to pre-read all that stuff for me, knowing what, I, what my job is, yeah. what I care about, and learn and bring all that to me. I think that's the next two, three years of, of stuff that's going to play out. Yeah. yeah. The reason we're in this garage is to sort of say where HP is going tomorrow. So what, what do you think, how, how is HP rebuilding itself using these cloud-based technologies? Yeah. Where do you think HP is going in the future with all this stuff? Well, well two or three things. You've seen the last two, two, two years or so, HP really invest heavily in the software business. Yeah. Right? We take the software business from a you know, okay business, billion dollars or so in, in just in the ne in network and infrastructure management, the old OpenView brand and now expand to a three or four billion dollar business that's growing well ahead of the market and highly profitable. So it's become one of the real stars of, of HP and that's through some acquisitions, but the reason we've done that is we think that software ultimately is the thing that makes solutions work. Yeah. Right? It glues together all the hardware, it kind of thinks, it distills what the customer wants into a solution they can use every day. So we're gonna to continue to invest heavily in software, both organically and inorganically. So you, you can see that and you can see with EDS, you know. The, um, where HP is trying to move next is truly to be a true solution provider from being a leading services provider. Okay. So that, that opens up a huge distribution network for all our great technology, but also well positions for us. For all the DNA we know and how to host corporate applications and information, well now we can take all that IP with our software and our great hardware and really chase the cloud agenda. Interesting. So you'll see more from us in the next 90, 120 days about that now that the EDS transaction is fully So closed. is there going to be a data center here in the garage? <laughs> you know, data centers are getting so small, there might be one right underneath your chair. <laughs> I don't right. think so. <laughs> we were in the data center of the future at, at HP Labs, and yeah. that was a, a, good, a good little tour, but yeah. uh, it'll be interesting to see what, they, what else they do. Yeah. Um, where can we learn more about what you guys are working on? Well, you know, the best place is our, uh, our digital hub. So we just announced an information management digital hub about uh, 30 days ago. So it's still pretty new, but we're going to be inviting the community of people that care about these topics to post information, share and what they're learning about our products and the best way to approach these problems. Yeah. So I want to see everybody over to that side. I think it's going to be a great portal for years to come. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else we should know about what you're doing or what, what your daily life is like? Well, my, you know, my daily life is about helping customers as fast, uh, and beating the competition. That's what we're all about. Yeah. Well, thank you very much right. for uh, having a little, a little chat with me. Good talking with you.